The following is a live special presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Why, hi there, I'm Ron Juggett, and welcome to a doubleheader for you on a, not only a special one on a Monday, but a doubleheader for you our second in three days. Uh, we're going back to September 6, 1978 for this important twin bill between the Texas Rangers and California Angels. And you are about to see Nolan Ryan, who we haven't featured very often in the replay, but he's here now. The Angels season is pretty much done. They fell off a proverbial cliff about two weeks ago, and they are nine and a half games behind the Rangers, who have a healthy three-game lead in the American League West. The Rangers go with Steve Comer in Game 1. We'll figure out Game 2 when we get to it. And the Rangers are 75-59. and 59. This is Game Number 135 for the Rangers, 135 and 136. It is beginning to look more and more like the Rangers have this division sewn up. But a lot can happen between now and the next 026 days or so. But right now, a Rangers sweep today could go a long way in ensuring that they are going to be in the playoffs, which would be a first and in the sixth year that this franchise has been in Arlington. For the Angels, again, a year too early, I think. They will be a lot better in 1979. They gave chase in 78. This was the one division where three teams finished within five games of each other. And who knows? An angel sweep tonight cuts their gap to seven and a half, and then all bets are off. So it's a beautiful night in Anaheim, 84 degrees, wind, clear skies. You'd think the Chamber of Commerce called or something. Winds left to right at 13. So here we go. It's two hours worth of baseball for you on a Monday morning. Just another Manic Monday. Because that's not my fun day. I don't have to run day. Oh, that'll be Sunday. This is just another Manic Monday. And so Nolan Ryan taking his warm-up toxes. One of the reasons why the Angels have struggled has been Ryan himself. He is 8-14. Good morning, Tribe fan. How are you? 8-14 with a 3.95 ERA. I'm on my computer. It's a, you know what? It's a Windows update day, and so my computer's acting slow. Appa Chatter, how are you, my friend? Check out his, he's got a YouTube channel at Festus Gerber. And his wife, what's the name of your wife's channel? The stuff that you guys make for the dog. It's so awesome. Anyway, start number 25 for Ryan. He'll have six more after this. He is 8 and 14 on the year with a 3.95 ERA. Against he is not started against the Rangers. How about that? We get free, free. You get all, you get 18 innings of baseball today. How about that? And hello, Mr. Mao. Mao. Man, the computer is being groggy. He last pitched on August 20th against the Orioles. He went eight and a third innings. We might have done this game. Bobby Joe was a channel search. Cooking with Bobby Joe, and you should because it's awesome stuff. All right, last time out was the 20th against the Orioles. He went eight and a third innings. He's allowed five hits, two runs. They were earned. They lost the game. He walked six and struck out a season-high 15. We did that game, as a matter of fact. He is a ground ball pitcher when you can make contact with him, and he's a fastball pitcher at 96. The key to Ryan is, especially at this point of his career, is will he find the strike zone? He's thrown 193 in two thirds innings, allowed 172 hits, 15 home runs, 105 runs, and his defense behind him has not helped matters. He's given up 20 unearned runs to 85. He has walked 125 and struck out 204. Is it free hot dog day at the park? It's Southern California. It's free tofu day at the park, even in 1978. Don't tell Lorenzo, okay? All right, so here's a lineup that Ryan will face in game one. 
Mike Hargrove will lead off at first base. Juan Benitez in center will bat second. John Lowenstein will hit third and play third. Al Oliver will clean up in left. Bobby Bonds in right will bat sixth or fifth. Richie Zisk, the DH, will go sixth. Jim Sundberg gets to catch game one. He'll bat seventh. Toby Hara at short will bat eighth and bump Wills. So lots of speed for Texas. He'll bat ninth and Steve Comer on the hill. Let's play two indeed, Mr. Mike. We'll throw about 120 pitches. And because Texas is contending and California is not, I am controlling the Rangers for both games of the doubleheader. So visiting team today because this means a lot more to Texas than it does for the Angels. Joe Rudy is 6-3 and a three in left. As we look at the Angels defensively, Rick Miller, not Lick Miller, but Rick Miller. Wow, the jokes I could come up with there. It's a 10 and a 7 in center, and Lyman Bostock a 7 and a 6 in right. Carney Lansford is a 6 at third. Anderson is a 5 at short. Bobby Gritch, who I agree should be in the Hall of Fame, a 9 at second. And Ron Jackson a 6 at first. Brian Downing a 6 and a 5 behind the plate. And Nolan Ryan an 8 range, but not a good fielder at 849. So, Hargrove steps in, 283, 9 homers, and 60 RBI. And the Rangers and Angels are underway. Ball four. We told you that Ryan control is the big issue, but Hargrove isn't going to steal. In fact, Ryan didn't even throw a strike in that at-bat. Brings up Juan Benitez or Bill Bib DeVoe. You're so cute there. At 224, 7 homers, and 34 RBI. Ryan deals. Benitez draws ball four. So, nine pitches from Ryan and two walks. He's thrown all of one strike. Here's John Lowenstein at 231, 7 homers, and 25 RBI. Pitch. Got him. A split finger at 85 on the inside corner, and there's one out. So Ryan has faced three bounders, and no one has put a ball in play. Here's Al Oliver. 318, 12 homers, and 73 RBI. Ryan kicks and deals. There's a fly ball left field. Man, this is slow. Rudy, going back, makes the catch. Two out, and Hargrove will hold. We're going to look at my task manager for a second. Because this is going really, really, really slow. System interrupts at 43%, huh? Come on. Why are we going so slow? The game isn't that much. He did catch it. Yep. He caught it. Two out. Bobby Bonds at 276, 18 homers, and 67 RBI. Must be Windows has... I see Windows has an update for me. So hopefully we'll speed this up just a bit. Pitch from Ryan. Ball four. So the bases are loaded. On a day I need to be done in about two hours. So Ryan has walked three. For Richie Zisk at 263, 19 homers, and 70 RBI. Nope, the game did not have its oval team. So they're loaded, two out. Ryan's already thrown 26 pitches here in the first. Zisk, little slow grounder to Gritch. Over to Anderson, that will retire the side. And playing this game in the key of R. No runs, no hits, no errors. The Rangers strand three after half an inning. Texas nothing. Here come the Angels. Now, or what are we doing here? This is ridiculous. What did we download? This is slow. Oh, it's a display restart. Oh, and we get the new feature update to Windows 10. Um...
air. Isn't that exciting? All right. Hopefully we're done downloading. You know what's going on is it's downloading the update to Windows behind me. Steve Comer making his sixth start. He's got five left. He is six and one on the year with a 2-6-3 ERA. He has won three straight. He has not started against the Angels. He has gone twice out of the pen. Seven and two-thirds innings, five hits. All three runs unearned. He's walked four, struck out three, and has won twice. He's 2-0. and oh. His last appearance, I believe, came out of the pen on the second against Milwaukee. He got a win, three, so it must have come out of the pen. Three and two-thirds innings, four hits. I bet we did that game. A run it was earned. He walked two and struck out one, so a 99 in the third innings. He's allowed 103 hits. Two homers, 39 runs, 29 earned. He's walked 30 and struck out 64. Fastball at 90 and a ground ball pitcher, and he has five more starts. After this, lineup he'll face. Rick Miller leads off in center field for the Halos. Carney Lansford will bat third and or bat second and play third. Lyman Bostock in right will hit third. Don Baylor, the DH, cleans up. Joe Rooney in left will bat fifth. Papa Jack Ron Jackson at first will go sixth. Brian Downing behind the plate, he'll go seventh. Bobby Gritch at second will bat eighth. And Jamie? Mike knows who it is. Anderson will be the shortstop batting ninth. Ryan threw 27 pitches in the first. Defensively for the Rangers, Al Oliver, a 5 and a 7 in left. Juan Benitez, a 9 and a 7 in center. Bobby Bonds, a 7 and an 8 in right. Around the infield, John Lowenstein, a 5 at third. Toby Hara, a 4 at short. Bump Wills, a 7 at second. Mike Hargrove, an 8 at first. And Jim Sundberg, a 10 and a 9 behind the plate. Rick Miller, 270. A homer and 21 RBI. And there is a slow roller to Lowenstein. Long throw to first, and that should be one out. I'm going to try to speed this up just a little bit. Remind me, i got to change that back for tomorrow or else I'm not going to know what the heck I'm doing. Here's Lansford, Carney at 299, four homers and 42 RBI. Hope you guys had a great weekend, by the way. Lansford, right center. Badikez will make the catch. This looks like electric football, doesn't it? <laughs> so two out for Bostock. At 303, three triples and 60 RBI. No score, bottom of the first. First to two today here on Retro Sports Network. Pitch to Lyman is a ground ball, right side base hit. Bonds will pick it up. And there's two out for Don Baylor. So two out single. Lyman has stolen 15 on the year. Baylor at 228, 26 homers and 87 RBI. Throw to first, Bostock isn't going anywhere. Pitch. Here's a slow ground ball to Hara, and he'll go across the way to Hargrove. Baylor can run, but he is out on a bang banger. So no runs a hit. California leaves a man on. After one, no score. So, Comer threw 12 pitches. Here's Sunberg. Jim at 272, four homers and 39 RBI. Pitch from Ryan. Right back to Nolan. Over to Jackson, one out. I think it could be said about Ryan. Hara, by the way, Toby at 241, 10 homers and 48 RBI. It can be said about Ryan especially in his days with the Angels. 
that he detested giving up base hits to the point where he didn't really want to throw strikes. If you got on with a walk, he knew he could throw the ground ball to induce a double play. But if he allowed a hit, now that was something different. He didn't like that. Pitch to Hara. Ball four. But in the process, Ryan has walked four in an inning and a third. Here's Bump Wills. 248, 13 homers and 41 RBI. Ryan throws to first, Hara back. Shall we? We shall. There goes Hara. The throw down from Downing to Anderson is in time. They got him. So two out. And a strike from Downing to, H to Anderson. It goes 2 6 on the cot stealing. And a ball one count. Pitch to bump. Got him. So Ryan gets out of it. He swung on and missed a 95 mile an hour fastball. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We go to the bottom of the second in game one. No score. So Rudy, Jackson, and Downing to face Comer here in the second. For the Angels, this is game 138. And, of course, the second half is game 139. And Rudy sends that one into left center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Oliver will pick it up. Rudy will hold. The announcer had his oval team. The computer did not. Here's Ron Jackson. 312, 6 homers, and 40 RBI. Pitch. Slow rower to Hargrove. His only play is to the bag at first, and Jackson's retired. Rudy goes to first, second. One out for Brian Downing. 252, 5 homers, and 40 RBI. And Downing hits a grounder to third. Lowenstein to Wills, and they got Rudy in a pickoff. How about that? Rudy was gone on the pitch, and Lowenstein said, oh, we're getting you there. And John threw it to Wills, and Wills chased him down. So it goes 5-4 on the fielder's choice. And now I'll bring up Bobby Gritch. 289, 10 homers. Productive year for Bobby. And 58 RBI. Bottom of the second, no score. First to two. And Gritch draws the two-out walk. So Comer, not happy with that. Full count was high. And that brings up Jim Anderson. Wasn't he a country singer as well? 147 and 6 RBI for Anderson. Not who you really want up with runners in scoring position. But beggars really can't be choosers. And there's a ground ball base hit left side. The joke's on me. Downing will round third and score. Toby Harrow with not a great play at short. Gritch moves to third, and the Angels have runners on the corners and two out for Rick Miller. So Comer, disgusted, 35 pitches, nine batters, an inning and two-thirds. Three hits, the game's first run, and a walk. Pitch to Miller. Ball four. And, oh, Comer's not happy. He missed high on that 3-1. He knew he did. Bobby Joe behind the plate says, don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Here's Lansford. Carney 0 for 1. So they're loaded. Gritch on third. Anderson on second. Miller on first. Comer. Line drive to short. Harrow will snare that. And the Angels leave him loaded. But they get a run on two hits and no errors. Yeah, I got some PC issues today, too. I think it has to do with a rather sizable Windows update the next time I restart. After two, one nothing California. I just want to get the hide that. Hold that lead. Oh, that tiger. Oh, that tiger. 
All right, so here's the situation in the American League West. Texas by three over the Royals. They've won three straight, and their magic number is 25. Minnesota now five and a half back. And California, kind of like Boston, some serious underachieving. They're 67 and 70. And the East, Baltimore by one over the Yankees and two and a half over the Brewers. Everybody else is pretty much out of it. And in fact, the Tigers, if Mr. Forsberg were here, would be happy that the Tigers have won seven straight and are now at 70 and 68. In the National League West, the Dodgers now have a five-game lead over the Reds. They've won five straight. And the East, Pittsburgh has cut Philadelphia's margin to a game and a half. <laughs> Tribe fan says, my internet and cable had a massive fight Saturday and didn't want to work for the majority of the day. They realized I wanted to watch hockey on Saturday and stopped at 8.30. It's, it's always like kids to do that, isn't it? And you see the first E on the board and the elimination number, and that's the Mets. Their season is done. Oakland might be done tonight, depending on what Texas does here. Even Atlanta still has a chance. Nine batters deep for Mr. Ryan. 39 pitches, two innings. Four walks and two strikeouts. Hargrove walked to start the ball game. Yes, when they play again, we'll have them on. And Hargrove strikes out. Ryan got him swinging on an 0-2 changeup. So one out and three for Ryan. Here's Beniquez. One walked his first time up. We've reached the point on the calendar where you really can't go more than two or three days in predicting game and pulling out games because you just don't know what's going to matter. Our resident Dodger fan won't be too happy, but if you got a five-game lead, that's you've just seen in the standings. That's a golf compared to most of these divisions. Pitch to Beniquez. There's a ground ball to Jackson. He vibrates it over to Ryan for the out. And the Pirates can thank the Dodgers for being in the race. They played 12 times in 1978. And one of the rare things you'll ever see in a replay, the Pirates won all 12. Absolutely. Two out for Lowenstein. Nobody on here in the third. John struck out his first time up. Ryan deals. And Lowenstein sends this one into right center. Miller has time to write war and peace by the time he can get there. And that will retire the side. No hits, no runs, and no errors. We go to the bottom of the third. one nothing Angels. So Bostock, Baylor, and Rudy to face Comer here in the third. Lyman singled his first time up. And he'll send that one foul for a space side. The ball boy tosses it to somebody from Cucamonga. JT Dutch, good morning to you too. How are you? So, a one two count to Bostock. And there's a line drive, base hit. So, Lyman's got a second single. I think Will's got there late. And the bad Texas defense. Keep an eye on that. I know the Yankees are, and the or Orioles whoever Texas might face in the league championship series. They got to win the division first, but you know where I'm going there. Here's Baylor. He's 0 for 1. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was about 10 days ago. <laughs> Do it well. Thanks for asking. So I get so tribe fan making me laugh here. So I guess Tom Hamilton, the Indians radio broadcaster, made a remark after the Indians beat the Tigers for their 20th straight time, that the last time the Tigers beat the Indians, that's domino was slim. Oh, I love Tom Hamilton. Pitch to Baylor, that's funny. Got him! 2-2 two -two fastball on the outside corner, first strikeout for Calmer. Here's Rudy, he singled his first time up. One nothing Angels, bottom of the third of a doubleheader. First game, of course, Rudy into right field, Bonds, 
goes back and makes the catch. So two out for Jackson. Ron 0 for 1. Pitch. Struck him out. So Comer gets out of it. And 0-2 looking for strike 3. No runs a hit. The Angels have left 5 on. After 3, one nothing California. So the Ryan Express will face Oliver Bonds and Zisk. Here in the 4th. Oliver 0 for 1. Right now, it's a series of bagels for the Rangers. Pitch from Ryan, and there's a line drive to first. Jackson's there, one out. Ballpark playing mixed. Lefties get no batting help for average. Righties a plus six. Lefties a plus 16 in homers. Righties a minus 11%. Here's Bonds. Bobby walked his first time up. And he'll strike out this time. Ryan got him to swing and miss on an 0-2 fastball at 96. Two out. So I'll bring up Zisk, who's 0 for 1. And there's a little looper. And there goes the no-hitter as he drops that one in front of Ostog. For a two-out singleton. Here is Sunberg. Jim is 0 for 1. Got him. So Ryan now dealing. He got him to swing and miss. A full count fastball. No runs, a hit, no errors. And we go to the bottom of the fourth. California one, Texas nothing. So it'll be Brian Downing, Bobby Gritch, and Jim Anderson for the Angels here in the fourth. It's interesting that here are two of the three teams in baseball that are named after states. It's not the Dallas-Fort Worth of Rangers. You know, now it's the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. But at the time it was California. And not to have any fights between Minneapolis and St. Paul. They're the Minnesota Twins. Pitch to Downing is a base hit left field. Oliver will pick it up. And Downing's on with a one for the no-out single. Brings up Bobby Gritch, who walked his first time up. And that's the sort of thing you don't ever hear about in a Fortnite stream. I always call him California. And then again, if I watch a Colts game, and the Colts have been in Indianapolis, what, 36 years now? They're still Baltimore to me. Pitch to Gritch. He drops one down. Sunberg will throw to Wills covering, and Bobby is out. Sack bunt 2-4, and Downing moves to second. So I won't pick on Jim Anderson with a runner in scoring position because he singled and drove home a run in the second inning. Comer. Ball four. Brings up Rick Miller, who is 0-for-1 with a walk. So 67 pitches through for Comer through 18 batters. One out here in the four. So three and a third innings, five hits. The run is earned. He has walked three and struck out two. Sunberg and Comer trying to get some signs on the same page. Miller to Wills. Might be two. Flips it to Hara for one. They got time over to Hargrove. And they turn it. They got him. So four, six, three on the twin killing. No runs a hit. They leave another runner on after four. California one, Texas nothing. So Toby Hara will lead off the fifth for the Rangers. Toby walked his first time up. Wills and Hargrove to follow. Ryan Deals struck him out. He got him looking on a three-two changeup. And there's one out for Bump. So that's six for Ryan. Here in the fifth. Infield in, Will swings, fly ball to right. Bostock will make the catch. Two out for Hargrove, who's 0 for 1 with a walk. 
Ryan, 76 pitches through 18 batters, four and a two-thirds innings. Captain Carl, how are you, my friend? He's allowed a hit. He's walked four and struck out six, and this is a Nolan Ryan start for sure. Pitch to Hargrove is a slow ground ball to Jackson, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Yep, left to right at 19, blowing right on my computer. Don't even have the fan on. Halfway home, you get the commercial. one nothing Angels. Really? Come on. Come on. Well, we just survived calamity. I didn't spill that Coke on myself. Yes, thank you, Bobby. And um, Yes, it used to be tough because it was all open. Pretty much the same deal as Candlestick before they enclosed it for the 49ers. And, yeah, Anaheim Stadium. All right, it's an Owen Ryan start. He's throwing a one-hitter, but he's walked eight gazillion batters. Texas had the bases lower than the first and couldn't score. And California sent seven to the plate in the bottom of the second. And a Jim Anderson single scored Brian Downing, and that's the long run of the game. So Comer, five hits through four, and the one run, he's walked three and struck out two. Ryan has walked four, struck out six, and allowed a hit through five. And that got us where we are. And yeah, I still call it, yep. Uh, when the Colts, Tribe fan says when the Colts play in Baltimore, the scoreboard operator uses a city name instead of Colts, so I'll say Indy versus Ravens. I wish the Browns would do that for the Ravens, too. Yeah. It's just so weird. Should be used to it. Like I said, it's been 36, 37 seasons. Lansford's 0 for 2 as we start the bottom of the fifth. And he's going to ground that one into right field for a single past Hargrove, and somebody's hurt. It's Lansford. He's grabbing his hammy. He says he's fine, and we'll go on. Here's Bostock. He's single twice. He's two for two. That's a sixth hit for the Angels. Rangers have one. Ball four. So the Angels are threatening here in the bottom of the fifth. Lansford on second, Bostock on first for Baylor, who is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And there's a fly ball to right. Back goes Barnes, and Bobby will make the catch. Lansford will tag and go to third as the throw goes in the infield. So runners on the corners and one out. Rudy, who's one for two of the single. JT Dutch remembers a 30 for 30 on ESPN called The Band That Would Not Die. That covered the old Baltimore Colts band. Yep, and they hung on long enough to play when the Ravens played at Memorial. Very good and very emotional, I bet. So runners on first and third for Rudy, who's one for two. And Joe strikes out. Comer got him to swing and miss at a 2-2 fastball at 91. That's big. And there's two out for Ron Jackson, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. They always are. You know, I watched the one, and we can talk about hockey now because Lorenzo's not here yet. Uh, the one that told the uh, 1980 Olympic hockey story from the Russians' point of view. Tremendous stuff. There was a scene, Fatisov, one of the defenders for the Soviets. They brought him back to Lake Placid, and so you got to watch of Miracles and Men. Got to watch him go through the, the clubhouse and onto the ice. And seen it through, you know, to watch that story through his eyes. Just 
tremendous storytelling. Yep, mine too. Just tremendous storytelling. Pitch to Ron Jackson. There's a base hit up the middle. Lansford will score. Bostock goes to third. And the Angels go up 2 nothing. So they're rooting for this in Kansas City as well. Brian Downing one for two. He is singled and scored. Eckman came in the second. Batiste off and his daughter. Oh, I didn't remember that. And his daughter, without knowing, sat in his locker. You know, sports is all about emotion. And for him, that must have been wow. So here's Downing, two out. Two nothing Angels. And there's a ground ball to Wills. Well, we'll take our time. Throw to first, and that will retire the side. Angels get a big run, though, on two hits and no errors. They leave a runner on after five, two, nothing, Halos. JT Dutch says, I don't think I'd be a hockey fan today if it was not for the style of play that Anatoly Tarasov pioneered, an absolute legend. There's a reason why the Soviets were always hard to beat, because they were good. It'll be Benikas, Lowenstein, and Oliver here for the Rangers in the sixth. Benikas, 0 for 1 with a walk. And Ryan got him. Swung on and missed a 94 mile an hour fastball, and that's 7 for the Express. Brings up Lowenstein, who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Wines and deals. Got him. We got a good afternoon. We got a good morning. And Lowenstein fouled it in the glove of Downing on an off-speed pitch. So two out. Yeah, the NFL films. What Ed and Steve Sable did for football. I mean, football is always going to have an advantage. Let me do Oliver first because Al is 0 for 2. And there's a base hit left side. Rudy will cut it off. Oliver will hold in the Rangers. Have a two-out single. Second hit of the ball game for Bobby Bonds. Oh. What Ed and Steve Sable did for the National Football League goes with, is, is the biggest reason, in my view, why it is the premier franch, you know, sports franchise today. Yes, you can easily bet on football, and fantasy does a good job with all that and stuff. But what they did as storytellers, the autumn wind is a raider. You know, that sort of thing. The voice of John Vicenda and then Harry Callis. Um, oh, absolutely. And it's too bad that Steve did not make the Hall of Fame before he passed away. Ed is in the Hall of Fame. And football does it right. They're not just... You know, Finn Scully shouldn't have a plaque in Cooperstown. He's in because of the award, but Finn Scully should have a plaque in Cooperstown, just not his name there. Pitched a, a throw to first, Oliver back. Yep, and Howard Cosell and what Monday Night Football meant, and sure. But it really was the storytelling of, of that. Yes. Jamie's right, you know, JT and Jamie are right. ABC and also Monday night in the 70s knew how to package football as a show. That's Rune Arledge. That, that is all on Rune Arledge. More Lorenzo. Pitch to Bonds is a ground ball base hit left side. Rudy will pick it up. And they're going to hold Oliver at second. So runners on first and second, two out for Ziskus, one for two. Yep. The close old man, and with the uh, with Bill King's call of that, old man Willie. Yep. The movies aren't necessarily my thing, but the storytelling that the Sables did, oh, it's just breathtaking. Here's this. He's one for two with a single. And of course, baseball missed the boat. Pitch to Zisk. Struck him out, so Ryan gets the side, but he allows two runners. No runs, two hits, and no errors. Five and a half down in game one, two nothing California. So it'll be 
Homer kind of running on E here. Gritch, Anderson, and Miller. And Gritch walked his first time up. Pitch. And that's a base hit. Going to go all the way to the wall. Bobby's going to go for three. The throw to Lowenstein. No, sir. So Gritch with the leadoff triple. And that brings up Jim Anderson, who's already got one RBI today on a single. Angels can make it more interesting if they sweep this. And Kansas City's rooting for California, sure. This week in baseball was good. And the highlights and stuff. But as far as... But that didn't really have the deep storytelling. And of course, NFL Films did a lot of the features for NBC's pregame show and the NFL Today and, and all that. I mean, there was a great romance about um, Mel Allen doing that and Warner Fusell doing the weekend highlights and such, but it was never... You got to know the people playing football. Pitch to... Well, Kenny Landro is going to pinch hit. The right move. Landro at 231. Two homers and 18 RBI. Runner on third... They're playing for the run at the plate. Popped up. Lowenstein. By the dugout. No. So the count is a ball and two strikes. Comer now over 100 pitches. Nobody out in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch to Landro is a ground ball base hit past Hara. And so it's now 3-0 California's grid scores. Yes, as it showed, Twib was great. Absolutely. And they hold up pretty well. That's how you follow baseball outside the local team. That and box scores and baseball cards. Best stale gum ever. So Rick Miller is 0 for 2. He has walked and grounded into a double play. Comer through 27 batters, 5 plus innings, 9 hits. Walked 4 and struck out 3. And he's thrown 103 pitches. His day's almost done. Miller will end Comer's day because he puts that one in the right center. Miller is going to get two, and the Angels have chased Comer. Let's see, September 6th. Okay, I can go with the lefty Jim Umbarger. This could get ugly in a hurry. Yep, back in the days of only regional TV programming for baseball for sure. Well, Jim Umbugger has 70 pitches. We'll see how far he can get. This is his 30th appearance. He is 4-4 four four with a 4-13 ERA. Fifth appearance against the Angels, including one start. He must have gotten hurt on that start because he's only gotten four and a third innings. Four hits, a walk, and three strikeouts, and has no record. Fastball pitcher at 91 and a ground ball pitcher. His last appearance was the 22nd. Two innings against the Blue Jays, a hit, a walk, and that's it. 76 and a third innings, 80 hits. 39 runs, 35 earned, 8 homers. He's walked 35, 36, rather, and struck out 53. Lansford, 1 for 3 with a run scored. Still nobody out. Two on, bottom of the sixth of game one. Pitch to Lansford. Right back to Umbarger. Throws to Hargrove for the out. Landro will hold one away for Bostock, who was two for two with a walk. So they've yet to retire him. Tribe fan muses, I wonder how many teams have a local network channel for baseball. If you don't have cable, very few. Maybe New York, maybe Chicago. San Francisco for sure. I think the Indians lasted until about 2007. In fact, if not for local networks showing Indians, I don't believe I don't see Carlos Viagra hit from homers from both sides of the plate in the same inning. You know, obviously, the contracts they have with their channels on cable are lucrative. But I don't think it would hurt 
especially in the summertime, to give one of those a simulcast. You want people to try your cheeseburger? Offer the cheeseburger on sale once in a while. Then they'll come find you. Pitch to Bostock. Ball four. So Umbarger has him loaded. A one out for Baylor, who's 0 for 3 with a strikeout. And Baylor hits a base hit right center field. Landro will score. Miller will score. Bostock holds at third. And Baylor on first. So it's 5 nothing. And that will bring up Joe Rudy, who was 1 for 3 with a single and a strikeout. Simulcast the game. Don't lose any of the revenue. You know, I'm not saying it needs to be exclusive. Back in the days, you know, here in New England, where you watch the Red Sox on a Friday night on TV 38 and a Saturday on Nesson. But, you know, do it all the same. Or, you know what I would do? Pitch to Rudy is a base hit left center field. That's going to score Bostock. Baylor goes to third. The Rangers are pooping the bed here at 6 0 California. JT Dutch says every so often the Dodgers will be shown on KTLA, but the Dodgers' usual channel is only available. I thought they had that settled now. Didn't Comcast take them too? It's Spectrum now. But it's at least a little bit better. Here's Ron Jackson, one for three. He has struck out and driven in a run. Pitch. And there's a base hit left field. Oliver's going to let that go all the way to the wall. Baylor scores. Rudy will round third and score. And Jackson goes to third. He's in with a triple, and it's 8 nothing California. Well, Spectrum bought Time Warner out. So if they didn't want to show live games, instead of showing infomercials on Channel 63, WXLY or whatever it is, or Judge Judy for the 18th time that day. I don't understand. You could get condensed games on MLB TV. Why not show a 20-minute cut highlight package of the game? You'll want to watch more than watch on, you know, Sports West 690 or whatever the hell it is, you know? Make the game more accessible for the fans. That's true, and baseball ratings locally are still pretty big. They're less interested for the out-of-market games than they are with football because you can bet on football. Here's Downing. He's one for three with a run scored. Ball four. So Umbarger, in the process of this conversation, has retired one batter, allowed three hits and walked two. Not a good ball game. Here's Gritch. Angels must have batted around by now. Triple. Run scored in a walk. Snap throw to first. Downing is back. The count is a ball and no strikes. Exactly. In every game in football matters. Jamie says, I think with a 162-game season, you put more in the local team. Football is a weekly show. Exactly. I mean, if you don't watch... Two games between the Orioles and the Yankees. Are you going to miss anything? No. But if you don't catch, let's say, the Giants and the Cowboys, that means a lot. That's a, one football game equals ten baseball games. Pitch to Gritch is a line drive to Lowenstein. Two out. We're going to see what time we're done with game one here. We might cut this after one game and show game two tomorrow. Because if you joined us late, Windows needs to update. And the chalkboard here is very slow. And I have to be done by 1.30. Landro has an RBI single. Came into, it's a pinch hitter, so they have batted around. Right, not so much watching the game, as Jamie says. No, it's on my end. There's a big Windows update coming. If we follow you long enough, your favorite team every day to check the score. NFL, it's a Sunday. It's once a week and it's done, yeah. It's to Landro. Ball four. 
So I think we're going to call a technical delay after this one. So apologies if we don't do a double header. Because we're 50 minutes into the game one and we're still in the sixth inning. Here's Miller. One for three. A double and a run scored. Base is loaded. Got him. And so that will retire the side. But the Angels, six runs on six hits and no errors. We go to the seventh. How you doing, my friend? It is ain't nothing California. And the Angel, well, Texas is taking umbrage with Umbarger. I take umbrage, JT, that you actually use the word properly in a sentence. It'll be Sunberg, Hara, and Wills. Sunberg 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And there's a ground ball to third. Lansford across the way to Jackson. One out. So what we'll do tomorrow is a... We'll see. Wind's, by the way, blowing out to left at 26. You can smell the hot dogs over at Disneyland. Here's Hara. He's 0 for 1. He has walked and struck out. In a minor league game, one team batting around three times in an inning, and one person made all three outs. No, but umbrage is not necessarily a word that a lot of people know. I remember watching a, a clip of Bob Euchre and Howard Cosell on a Monday night game, and Cosell is giving Euchre a hard time and somehow uses the word truculent. Do you know what that means? Uh, Ryan, 8 and 14, well, you can't walk half the American League. What's Ryan's run support? Uh, four and a half. That's pretty good run support. His whip is pretty high. And if you look at this quality start percentage, it's only 45.8%. But the ZRA Plus is about the same. All right, Harris 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Now, 78 was just not a great year for Ryan. 79 was, and they won the division. Pitch to Hara, ball 4, which is why you get a pitch count of 160 for Ryan. Fifth walk for Nolan. Here's Bump Wills. He's 0 for 2, 1 out with a strikeout. And so, anyway, so... Euchre retorts back to Howard. Of course I know what truculent means. That means the truck you lent. Lorenzo tells the joke just as I get it out. Interstate trucking concerns. Yeah, that would be a U-Haul. Pitch to Wills. Should have stolen Hara. Ryan strikes out Wills, and that's 10. So an 0-2 fastball at 96. Ryan throwing a three-hitter. I don't know if that's the same one, Steve. That's a pretty rare name. I love that. Jamie's, Jamie's right. What I think Ali said to Howard, whatever that is, if it's good, then I'm that. <laughs> I love watching Cosell and Ollie. They generally did care about each other. And Howard and Euchre great together. There goes Hara. He's going to try to steal a throw down to Mullenix, and they got him again. So Harris thrown out twice. And it's stretch time. Ain't nothing California.
Humbarger is on Rochester in your 81 International League replay. That's cool. And they were with the Rangers at that point, too, or with the, with the Twins. Lansford's one for four with a run scored. So, revised schedule. We'll do game two of this doubleheader tomorrow at noon Eastern. And then we will take a look to see. We'll just get two days in at one point. See what the weather is up here and see if there's another bad day coming. So we'll get caught up here, but with the update needing to happen, I, I, like I said, it can't run past 130, and I know we're going to do that. And that's true. Euchre's retort could always be, did you ever hit a home run off of Sandy Koufax? And then Cosell would rhapsodize for about 45 minutes about jocks in the booth in front of Frank Gifford. Pitch to Lansford is strike three. He swung on a bad pitch, and Umbarger has two strikeouts. Here's Bostock. They've not retired him. He's two for two with two walks. Yeah, one of, yeah, that's a good one, too. A good Euchre story. He knew his career was over when he came to the park, and they said no visitors in the clubhouse. JT is right. I think Euchre was the one that said his way to catch a knuckleball was to wait until the ball stopped rolling and then pick it up. Yep. Pitch to Bostock, and they're finally going to retire him, I think, this time to Beniquez. And that will retire this, or two out, rather. For Baylor, one for four. And he has singled, scored, struck out, and driven in two. And there's a fly ball, left center field, and gone. So Baylor is homered, and it's 9 nothing. This replay should be slower than hell. Johnny loved Euchre. So the reason why we're going to cut this short is not that I'm tired. I did my latte and I have a Coke in front of us, Coke Zero, to drink. But there's a Windows update that's trying to work its way through. And the chalkboard is so slow. Joe Rudy, two for four. As single twice, driven in a run, scored a run, and struck out. Pitch to Rudy is a line drive to left field. It's going to get past Oliver. Rudy's going to hold it second, and the Angels have pummeled the Rangers. The Angels, who have just had a 10, yeah, Euchre's still alive, still working, and he's almost 90. Here's Ron Jackson. He's singled and tripled. He's one for three and driven in three. That came in the sixth. Where has this California team been the last month? It's kind of like watching Ralph Goodall yesterday morning. Yeah. Slow roller to Wills. Over to Hargrove. Just a bit outside. Don't think on him. So we go to the eighth inning, a run on two hits and no errors. California nine, they get the run on the Baylor homer. Texas nothing. And Ryan is going to get his ninth win unless all heck breaks loose. Hargrove is 0 for 2. He has walked and struck out. I'm surprised. But that's the beauty of baseball. You can poop the bed a lot. And on any given day, something should happen. And the Angels, on paper, are a better team than Texas. Pitch to Hargrove was 0 for 2, ball 4. Yep, that's why they play a full 162. Six walk for Ryan. Juan Beniquez, 0 for 2, a walk and a strikeout. Downing and Ryan will go through some signs. Beniquez, slow roller to Gritch. This might be two. Mullenix, who's a five, is short for one. Over to Jackson, and that is two. So two out for Lowenstein, who's 0 for three with two strikeouts. Ryan deals. Ball four. Ryan has walked seven. That's right. Downing says to Ryan, it's just 9 nothing. Throw it over the plate. We got to play two today.
I do think Texas was a superior team in 78 despite having the same record. I guess I'm thinking because the Angels made the playoffs in 79. And Texas was dorky enough to fire their manager the last day of the season. Best season in Rangers history for a long time. And they fire the guy. Pitch to Oliver gets away from Downing. And Lowenstein will take second on the wild pitch. Ball four. Oh, stupid. Beyond stupid. Unless they weren't going to renew his contract anyway. But what did they think he was going to do? Bobby Bonds one for two. Rangers have runners on first and second. Bonds has walked and struck out. Well, the yeah, the Angels added Carew and Dan Ford. That certainly that must have been a trade, wasn't it? Because they both came from Minnesota. Yeah, Grich had a and Baylor was the MVP. Ball four. They're loaded. For Richie Zisk, who was one for three, he has singled and struck out. So Ryan has walked nine. I believe this is the second time in the ball game he's walked the bases loaded. So Lowenstein on third, Oliver on second, Bonds on first. That's good speed. A single could make it nine two. Pitch to Zisk. Got him. Well, if that isn't a Nolan Ryan inning, I don't know what is. He swung on and missed an 0-2 fastball at 96. He has walked 9 and struck out 10. And somehow has a shutout going. We go to the bottom of the 8th. It's 9 nothing California, but only 3 hits. Yep. <laughs> so here's Downing. 1 for 3. Umbarger's pitching this one he has walked and struck out a batter umbarger ball four this game has had 900 base runners no runs three hits and no errors for texas but in typical nolan ryan fashion they've stranded nine california nine runs 15 hits and no errors, and they've stranded 12. Despite what they say in Little League, a walk is not as good as a hit. Rich, one for two with a triple, a walk, and a run scored. Umbarger. Ground ball, base hit, left side, Oliver. Hara again with a poor play. And so there's that's the 16th hit for the Angels. Nobody out for Mullenix, who's hitting 168 with a homer and 15 RBI. I wonder if they pinch hit for Mullenix here. Of course, you are up nine runs. They let him swing, and he makes contact. In fact, that's a pace hit. And drop in front of Beniquez, and the Angels have him loaded. And I got to go to my pen again. Well, we'll see what they do with Rick Miller. So, Miller one for four, a double, a walk, a strikeout, and a run scored. I think JT says Bill James said something to the, the effect of Ryan being a perpetual rookie. Or what they tell kids in the Dominican Republic, Jamie adds, you can't walk off the island. That's true. My phone's ringing, and I have no idea where it is. And I'm not answering that. They can talk to my answering machine. Okay, Miller, one for four, a double, a run scored, a walk, and a strikeout. And separate trades. Who did Minnesota get back? Pitch to Miller. Base is loaded. Umbarger struck him out. It's like watching Nolan Ryan squared here. And 92 mile an hour fastball, one out. Landro was part of the Carew trade. Okay, that makes sense because I remember Kenny Moore with the Angel. I mean, with the Twins. Lansford is one for five. Single, scored, and struck out. Bases loaded, nine nothing. Bottom of the eighth. 
pitch to Lansford. And there's a base hit left side. Downing will score. Gritch will hold it third. It's 10-0 California. Oh, my goodness. So, welcome to the bigs, Danny Darwin. He's making his 78 debut. He's 1-0 and with it in real life with an ERA of 415. He went eight and two-thirds innings, allowed 11 hits. He walked one and struck out eight. He features a fastball at 91 and is a ground ball plus pitcher. Came up on September 1st. And if he can get two outs, we can all go home. Danny, yeah, this time of year you get a debut. Danny Goodwin and Ron Jackson went to Minnesota for Dan Ford. Dave Engel, Par Hartz, Par, Paul, <laughs> Paul Hartzell, Brad Havens, no relation to Richie, and Kenny Landro went to the Twins for Carew. Eddie Ginsel to the punchline scoring in this inning. How in the world do you trade Rod Carew? Pitch to Bostock is a snap throw to first, and Lansford is back. Pretty daring with the bases loaded. 10-0 Angels here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bostock. Slow roller to Wills. And there will be only one play to first. Gritch will score. They go to Hara for one. There's no chance to get Bostock. Uh, you missed California blowing this open about an hour ago. So it's 11-0 Halos. They have 18 hits. Danny Darwin, he's no Dave Stegman. Now what? I got to take this. Hold on. Hello? Hello? How are you, Laura? Pretty good. How are you? Uh, we're pretty doing pretty well, thanks. Well, I got the one. Okay. Yeah, there's only one. Yeah. So far. So far. We're getting a second one, but that's not here yet. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. I'm glad you did. And how's your wheelchair and motorized chair coming along? Uh, we're waiting for the new one. Okay, what is that? Good question. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've signed the paperwork to expedite the process, and she's hoping before Labor Day. Oh yeah, we're, you know. Yep. And Sarah's, doing okay? Sarah's doing the best that she can. Just fine. Just fine. Yeah. Okay. Will do. Uh, take care of you too. Right, bye, bye bye. Bye bye. That's fifty dollars of taxpayer money. All right. So Baylor is two for five, a homer and three RBI. Eleven nothing. Two out. Bottom of the eighth. He couldn't hear a thing. Yeah, they traded Lander of the Dodgers. He won in ring in 81 and uh, 88. Midlife crisis. Looked up Paul Hartzell. Played on a rival high school of his. That's cool. So what did I say, Lorenzo? Pitch to Baylor is a base hit. The gland plays on. Mullenix scores. Baylor going for two. He is in there, and it's now 12-0. No runs, three hits, no errors for the Rangers. They left nine on. Twelve runs, 19 hits, no errors, and 12 left on for the Angels. So runners on second and third. Rudy, three for five with a double, an RBI, a run scored, and a strikeout. 
Pitch to Rudy is a base hit up the middle. Bostock will score. Baylor scores. California has scored a week's worth of runs in eight innings. It's 14 nothing. It's a game that makes you a lot of money. Here's Jackson. He's two for five. He's tripled and driven in three. The Angels might be have a positive run differential after this game. They need to be plus 14. You know what? They're close. It's now minus three. So they've gotten five here in the eighth. That's amazing. Yeah, I hope Ryan can hold a 14-run lead. It's already 20-1 here. It's taking an hour and ten just to play this one. Jackson at the plate. And there's a slow roller to Hera. He goes over to Hargrove, and I think, I think they're done. They are. So, five more. Five hits and no errors. We go to the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. It's the Rams 14, the Cowboys nothing. He just has to keep walking two and striking out three. Yep. So, Sunberg, Hara, and Wills. Ryan had enough time to go get a burger and fries. And the Angels have scored 13 since the fifth. That's not bad at all. Pitch to Sunberg. There's a fly ball right center field. Miller goes back, and that is gone. Nope, off the top of the wall. So Sunberg with a leadoff double, and that's the fourth hit. So do I dare say it? Texas needs 14 to tie and 15 to go ahead. That's nearly the yearly run output for the 63 Dodgers. Yeah. Here's Hara. He's 0 for 1. He has walked twice and struck out once. Ryan has walked 9 and struck out 11. And make it 12 as Hara goes down looking on a 1-2. So Bump Wills has struck out twice. He's 0 for 3. One out. Pitch to Ryan from Ryan is a ground ball to Gritch. Bobby has time to autograph it over to first, two out. I'm lucky that they don't get the bat now. And so here's Highgrove. Ryan has faced 36 batters, 148 pitches. That's government efficiency for you. Eight and two thirds innings, only four hits. He has walked nine and struck out. 12. Pitch to Hargrove. It's a line drive right center field. Miller will win the ball game. JT says that the Angels scored 14 runs at least three times. In fact, um, they scored 16 in three different games. So Nolan Ryan gets a four-hit shutout. And before you sit there and hand him cookies and stuff, he walked nine. So he put on 13 base runners in nine innings. Nine innings, four hits. He walked nine and struck out 12 to get to nine and 14. He faced 38 batters. Steve Comer did not pitch well. Ten hits through five. Five runs all earned. He walked four and struck out three. Umbarger was unboggled. Eight hits, eight runs, all earned in two and a third innings. So we're going to make Don Baylor our player of the game. He went three for six with a homer and four RBI. You know, only 160 pitches for Ryan. He could have thrown, a, no, he threw 155. Oh, my arm is tired. Kept it under 200, like a Formula One driver. So economical. All right, we're not going to play the rest of the day in baseball. We're going to do that tomorrow. So let me do some configuring here. So game two, because of the Windows update and the fact that we took an hour and 14 to play game one, uh, will be tomorrow at noon Eastern, 75 and 60 Texas and California at 68 and 70. But I don't want to lose the beat here. So let's see. Was there a game that I was going to play two games? 
Uh, so Wednesday, the Dodgers and Houston now. So that will get bumped up. Yeah, it's the old Buzzy Bavasi line. I can afford two, eight, and nine pitchers. Uh, so Wednesday will be a single game. Thursday, San Diego, Cincinnati. What I might do as a split. I think that's what we're going to do. So Thursday, we're going to do a split doubleheader. Day Niners, San Diego and Cincinnati would be the day game. And then the night game would be Milwaukee and Minnesota. So you get baseball during the day and baseball at night. And oh, the Wednesday game. would be a night game. So we'll do Tuesday, the second half of the doubleheader tomorrow in the afternoon. Then Wednesday is our prime time game, Lorenzo. The Dodgers and the Astros. And then we'll do a split doubleheader on Thursday to get us back up to speed. Thank you, Microsoft Windows. So not going to see me again on camera. So there you have it. So game two tomorrow at noon, and we'll catch it up to you. And always a pleasure to have you guys in the chat. So we'll talk to you tomorrow for game two. And then remember, Lorenzo, it's prime time, 4 p.m. Wednesday night for the Dodgers and the Astros. And so until tomorrow for game two, I'm Ron Juckett. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.